everyone, John Henry here, SlingshotFutures.com. Welcome to the Daily Futures Market Outlook for tomorrow's trading, where we put together a trade plan of attack for tomorrow, and tomorrow is going to be the 25th of the month, that's 125 of 18. January 25th, right around the corner, and a Wednesday behind us, uh, inventories on crude oil were a little bit interesting today, but before we jump on in, as always, make sure to swing it over to SlingshotFutures.com, scroll down and click on the Join the Daily Outlook newsletter. From there, you'll be able to sign up for our email list that you'll never miss one of these videos or the content inside the emails ever again. Inside the email, we talk about all kinds of different stuff that we just don't have time to in the video from stocks, cryptos, anything that looks interesting that could be a potential opportunity will be posted in that newsletter. So make sure to sign up for that if you haven't done so already. Along with that, the Live Trade Room subscription and trial info is where you can sign up for a free three-day trial in the Live Trade Room so you can hang out with us for a couple days, get your feet wet and see what we're all about and how we work day in and day out. Now, taking a look at the markets, the euro is continuing to the upside. We have met that major objective that we were looking for yesterday with that blow off, that uh, that kind of gap from the swing to swing point. We have broken above that. So in all intents and purposes, we have kind of, well, surpassed what we were expecting to see. The euro has a very strong rally to the upside, and this is pretty reminiscent of what happened back here. Uh, we have a very strong back to back to back to back to back all the way up, really strong bull rally, a singular pullback, and then continuation up for another leg. And I'm kind of anticipating the exact same thing here. Given how strong this is, we have, once again, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight candles back to back. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Not quite. We've got eight candles back to back, so an even stronger rally. Likely the first pullback that we get will be met with buyers attempting to get that secondary leg once again. So that's kind of the anticipation going into the afternoon and evening session today, uh, is just looking for that pullback and potentially utilizing the same area that was resistance. Didn't seem like they responded to it very well uh, for a target area, but that might be a nice bouncing place to catch a quick little snap back to the highs again. Overall, outside of that, uh, you know, everything looks pretty extended. We have an overall channel that we were talking about yesterday, maybe like this, maybe not. It just doesn't fit very well. And it kind of, it just looks like they're overdoing it a little bit. With this big blow off on the highs and then continuation of an even stronger leg to the upside, uh, chances are we're running out of steam up here, but we haven't had that pullback yet. And I'm still anticipating that at some point. What I would love to see uh, in the long run, maybe over the next, you know, week to two weeks, would be a dip back down to the major swing levels to kind of fill in this space that it left behind for some buying pressure to push the market back up. But in the short term, looking for the evening and afternoon session, looking for a singular candle pullback, just like we saw back here, maybe one or two, and then looking for a buying move right back up towards the highs once again. Over on gold, we have met that ABCD type corrective move up. Uh, well, I say corrective move, continuation move rather, uh, for the upside. We have the ABCD leg, first leg into second leg, and we have met that to the tick pretty much uh, right inside of here, and we are finding a lot of resistance off of that test. Lots of profit taking going on here, not a surprise at all. Now, zooming out a little bit here, if we look at the major overall point back here, we can see that if we draw this up on the highs, we did kind of blow through that a little bit uh, in terms of any type of support that may have been there uh, for resistance on the top. But really just looks like a lot of profit taking is happening here. So what I would really like to see going into the evening and afternoon session on this as well would be a dip back to the previous swing highs for some semblance of support. We've had a massive blow off through the highs in a very uh, ubiquitous kind of breakout candle. These are the kinds of candles that you really want to see uh, for these good breakouts. When you break out of a level or a swing or whatever you're breaking out of, when you have that breakout that tends to be about 50% into the candle, those are my favorite kinds and those really show dedication for the breakout move and if we can get that popping back to retest that area that would be a very nice potential opportunity for buyers to step back in for a secondary leg so that's really what I'm waiting for right now on gold over on crude oil, we have a little bit of a ways to go until we hit that ABCD leg to the upside. That's looking more around 66.50 to 66.70. Got a little bit more distance to go, but overall we have a lot of bullishness. Crude oil inventories was a complete miss. Yesterday's API report was looking at uh, a good, well, 4.6 uh, on the build side. They were looking at a build of 4.6 million barrels. And the forecast yesterday was a negative one point some odd in some change on the API. So it was completely 
completely wrong. And then we come into today, and the forecast for the today's inventories was a negative one as well. So in all intents and purposes, everybody was really looking and assuming that it was going to be a build going into today's inventories. And I'm assuming that a lot of traders on the rally higher over the overnight session were probably building in short positions, looking to try to catch that bearish move uh, on the news or potentially bearish news to shove the market down to catch some really nice profit targets. Little bit of a, a spanner in the works though. The inventories came out as expected. They came out today uh, at negative one. So the fact that they came out as expected, that is a bullish number, but not only is it just bullish, right? Okay, yeah, so they have less than expected. It's only negative one million, not that big of a deal. But the reason it's so bullish is because of the fact that the traders that were trying to build into that move assuming that it was going to be a short play, now got stuck. And as soon as that news came out, you'll notice if you zoom into a faster time frame, if you look at something like a five minute chart, there was a quick snap down. And then once the news kind of realized, wait a minute, whoa, we've been, you know, sellers have been trying to sell this whole, the whole way up, trying to build in nice positions. We're in a profitable position and the news came out as expected. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 I don't want it. They all dump it. They all jump ship and it goes rocketing to the upside, even pull back again before it finalized that move back to the upside. So a lot of traders were likely building in shorts and ended up kind of biting them a little bit as they quickly exited on some fear that they were on the wrong side with that news coming out as expected. So it's likely that because of that news kind of pushing the market up, it won't be as sustainable of a move. We are very deep into the trend already, but more likely simply the fact that we're going to see a little bit more continuation because the sellers jump ship. Uh, they've been building all morning, trying to catch that bearish news move that were, well, they were hoping it was bearish, came out bullish. They jumped ship and that rocketed the market up. So I'm looking for probably another four hours or so of upside before we start seeing some pullback on crude. And then over on the S&P, the S&P finally giving a small little correction down, very reminiscent of what happened back here. Uh, if you were to combine this candle and that candle, you would see that they look pretty much how this one looks here. Uh, I still think that the, ind the index markets are way, way overdone to the upside and they are in desperate need of a correction. But that said, uh, it seems to be the only corrections that the market is giving us are these little, well, little in the sense of the grand scheme, big in the sense of the candle size. Uh, so little big correction uh, that we have going on here in the market. Participants seem to love those types of quick dips, buying into it and assuming that we're probably going to make another attempt at the highs. Once again, just like it happened back here, just like happened back here. And once again, we have it back here. The one thing that makes this a little bit more juicy, not only the fact that it's a big blow off candle, but we also have a trap below that previous swing low. Uh, lots of buyers likely accumulating into that for a move back up towards those highs. So upside objective over the next couple hours, it's going to be at around 28.51 half or so, maybe to a brand new high and push into 28.55. So that's going to do it for the outlook. As always, like we always say, make a plan, trade the plan, follow those rules, and you should be A-OK. -okay. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email, jbrank at slingshotfutures.com. Stay safe out there, and we will see you all tomorrow.